Okay, we're going live. It's happening. I'm going to do that one next. First up is going to be this Xbox One S HDMI port. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, uh, Xbox, for putting two different HDMI ports on your machines. That's the only thing I have to piss and moan about today is could be worse. Pads to solder onto on this thing. It's not like a regular USB or even like a uh, PlayStation HDMI port. <clears throat> and all kind of real estate. Oh, hello there. Are you watching me work? There is no structure or plan for this video. I'm just going to stream while I work. It's so loud you twerk. Oh, I'm get a couple of, couple of bridge connected right there. Still bridged. That's okay. That's okay. Just want to be gentle with this, uh, moving it around. The legs are not seated in. It's getting the electrical connection perfect before seating the legs because trying to move it afterward. Okay.
touch the room a little bit. He said you gotta touch it in the back. No, don't touch it in the back. What? Touch it in the back. Those are solid. Some mess out of here. Make it look pretty. Yeah. Hmm. This is always kind of look like shit. Presentable. That's going to work just fine. The temperature up a little bit. We'll start getting some solder down in the legs here so it's secure. We want to heat up the whole leg as much surface area as we can. Look at it go. Look at it go. Take that solder and take all of that solder. You know you want it. <clears throat> okay, I'll from this side. That's the high that goes. We shall have to remedy that. Heat it up and put some more solder in Is this leg not sticking through? It's either shorter than the other ones, or this thing is somehow on and crooked. I'm pretty sure it's not on and crooked. <clears throat> but now I have doubt. I can't live with doubt. Yeah, nah, that bitch is close. That would be real good. Just how it needs to be. Okay. Xbox One S HDMI port. Done. Next. Uh, 
show. All right. Up next, iPhone 6S, no power. Come on. Oh man, this computer is just. I feel bad. I'm going to be annihilating this computer while I stream. If the stream ever makes money, I can put all of it towards uh, upgrades to make the stream better. Right now, this is all, all this stuff's out of pocket, so I went cheap. I did price out a a streaming computer though and you could build something that'll definitely get the job done like pretty well minus a video card which I already have I was looking at like 800 bucks to build a, a Ryzen 1700 system no it'd be a desktop yeah the big question is, where do you put it? I think I'd have to. I think I'd probably end up just putting shelves everywhere mm -hmm. around here. Okay, this is a 6S that came in dead. Battery's dead, USB pulls nothing. They charge the battery up, and it turned on. The USB still pulled nothing. And the battery died super quick. So I got a new charging port and a new battery plugged into it right now. You said your USB was pulling nothing? Mm -hmm. I got 0.9 right now. Really? Yeah. 1.75. I don't think that's going to be TriStar. 1.8. Yes, cold. Okay, okay. Notice what time it is. Because it's already connected to our guest Wi Fi network. It is a phone there, see? Put an aftermarket battery on it. USB is 1.7 right now with the battery at around 55%. Hmm. Let's put it back in the housing. Well, we can, there's one thing we can try first, just for, for curiosity's sake. Let's hook it up to the DC power supply. With my new squid cables. I just got the new version of the the iPower Red. This thing's pretty nice. It runs your charging port and battery through the same flex, and it just gives you a, a button to turn the phone on with. Damn convenient. It's one of those things you you don't realize how much you like it or need it or want it until you actually use it. And then you don't want to go back. Yeah. And these cables, nice flexible thin FPC style cables are way better than the rigid ones from before. Alright. Let's move this over. Oh man, I, I feel bad for this computer. Can't even move the mouse around today. 
think what we need to do is... Sorry, I'm not going to be able to keep up with commentary. I'll have to get a, a whole different computer to watch the streams with and talk to commentary. All right, that's better. Okay. Power Z is getting stupid too. Uh, monitor. Let's, okay. <clears throat> That's less than ideal, but all right. So here's Power Z. These are just giving a reading of what's going on on my DC power supply. So when I tell it to give activate battery voltage. There's no parasitic draw. And now we prompt it to boot. Of course, power is frozen. Let's try this again. Well, 0.26 right now. Half an amp. It kind of fluctuates as it boots. <clears throat> okay. Send him 4.2 volts. Into the, the unit here. That's actually my first time starting this one up, so I'll be interested to see what kind of battery reading it gives us. Hopefully it's more consistent than the last one. That's the problem with all of these power supply squids is they have a circuit in them that talks to the single wire info line for the gas gauge. But it's it's kind of inconsistent. So right now this one's showing us 1% on the battery. More than likely though, it's gonna let's do um, I'm gonna make a new scene here. This is live. You don't have anything better to do if you're watching this. Let's do Let's call it scope plus PZ. Hey, okay. I'm making new scenes. That's why the stream's black. Don't you worry about a thing. Okay. We're going to add video capture device. This video is going to be untitled. This is this is watch if you're totally bored and you want to see some stuff maybe get fixed, but mostly me screwing around with figuring out how to stream. We want window capture. How is he? Oh yeah. Oh look at that. That's beautiful. Oh. Almost forgot the most important part. Copy. Paste. You need that for sure.
One last thing, one last thing. Copy. Oh, and look, Parzi's frozen now. <clears throat> okay. Okay, 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 okay. You can't see it. I'm clicking 100,000. Error messages. So maybe if we maybe if we bump the current up a little bit on here, I'm gonna give it one more. We'll go to 4.3 volts instead. Is that gonna give us anything? No. It's even more confused now. Well, that was worthwhile. I'll just read off the amperage readings I have. 4.3 volts, uh, 0 0.1 amps. Okay. Uh, this, however, if you ever drop in your phone off at a repair shop and you're hesitant about giving them your passcode, because you think they're going to remember your passcode and steal your stuff. First off, check and see if they're reputable. If they're the kind of people who steal stuff, then don't go there in the first place. And if you actually don't trust them in that regard, don't trust them to work on your stuff. But if you're worried about, like, me remembering your passcode, <laughs> I promise I will forget it. Unless it's something I can guess. If your passcode is 2480 or 0842, up and down the middle, or 0000, or 1234, or anything like that, you ought to change it because people with any experience will guess that. Other than that, though, don't worry. I don't care enough about your stuff to snoop. I got my own stuff to worry about. This, this thing, this is great. Let's see if Power Z wants to sponsor the stream. Yeah, now we got just. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't like being looked at. Let's do. Uh, okay. Let's try this. Watch it one more time. And while the window's not being captured. Yeah, it's still acting retarded. Okay, sorry. No power Z for you. You just have to take my word for it. Obviously, you can see it's up and running. And it's actually reporting 60% battery, which is actually kind of, that's a nice little spot we want it reporting. You're not going to hit low battery mode, but you're also not going to be full battery. So... Our current draw is pretty normal. Um, what I'd like to do let's put on airplane mode. When you put on airplane mode, it turns off all the radios. Oh, let's go ahead and turn off Wi Fi. Turns off all of the wireless communication. Let's go turn. It's supposed to turn off Wi Fi and Bluetooth automatically when you put it on airplane mode. Maybe. Maybe the airplane mode ain't what it used to be. I don't actually think it's possible for your phone to interfere with the communication systems of a modern airplane. That would be uh, would be kind of a glaring security hole if you could bring down the plane just with your your phone being on. Pretty sure that their systems are way more robust and protect it against anything a cell phone could throw out. But, if they tell you to put it on airplane mode or turn it off, 
Podcast listen. Just do it. And it can kick you off. Um, okay. <clears throat> so we're about 0.12 current draw right now. Uh, this is screen off, no radios on, no wireless communication whatsoever. That should drop. I wonder if the train can be heard. It's my 6S battery. You know how you can tell it's a 6S battery? Because I wrote 6S on it. Actually, on camera. 6S battery. It has a different connector for one, but if you're picking up a, an Apple battery, that 6.55 watt hour is the giveaway that it's a 6S battery, not a 6. But otherwise, they look the same. The iPhone 6 battery is 6.91 watt hours. Now, I've officially taught something. Great job, everybody. You can go home. I'm waiting for this to drop. It usually drops to less than 0.1. A 0.1 draw will actually run this battery down pretty quick at idle. Tracking this down could be very difficult. So it goes up to 0 0.3, 0 0.2 or so when the screen's on. The screen's back off. 0 0.12. <clears throat> the reason I insist on trying to use this tool is because it does some really cool stuff. You hit this run pause button. It's actually going to create a graph for us. Probably should have started doing that a while ago. <clears throat> so it's going to create a graph and it'll even zoom in and out and scale it automatically while it's running. So I guess we'll just run this for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. see if that's gonna for whatever reason it seems to be crashing on us when I tell OBS to just monitor that window doesn't like it I'm not trying to see me look at my So eventually I want to fill up this entire divider with movie posters. We got a good start. We got one, dude. It starts with one. Just ask Lincoln Park. <laughs> Is there anything else to fix around here while we're waiting on this? Is there anything else to fix around here? That's it? We fixed everything in the whole city. Oh, wait, no. Okay. 
He's working on it. Hmm? I'm working on it right now. Oh, there it goes. Power Z. Freezing on us again. This uh, the stream brought to you by Power Z by Charger Lab. Really can't vouch for this product enough. It's, uh, it never fails. And I never lie. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, well, in the meantime, I'm just going to set this over here. I want, I want to see if any period of time will cause this to drop below 0.1. Ordinarily, uh, when a phone is at idle, it's going to be like 0.2 or, or 0.02. 0.02 to 0.04. Uh, it'll drop to. Um, 0.1 is, is a little bit too high. That's something is consuming extra current and killing the battery in here. So, on to the next thing. We have an iPhone 7 Plus was sent in giving audio IC symptoms. So, this one needs to charge up. Oh, there it goes. <clears throat> This will be fun. More waiting. I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna confirm that it's a long boot with a a home button that clicks and okay. So we have the screen shut off and turn back on. Home button is clicking right now. So we'll give it another 10-15 seconds. Ordinarily, this phone would be on already. The phone thinks it's on. In fact. Let's, uh, we can do something. We can do something. In fact, if we plug it into the computer, it's even telling the computer it's on. As evidenced by this. It's going to make a liar out of me now. Okay, well, maybe sometimes the part of the boot that gets interrupted happens earlier or later than others. Seems like most of the time on an audio I see, you get this you get this long boot, it's still on the Apple logo. Home button's still clicking, you gotta take my word for that. So you can somehow reach through and touch it. Touch your screen. Do it, do it. <clears throat> Let's get this one apart. Right. I'm going to do my disassembly off camera here.
for who? A cistern is a water collection device. Collect rainwater. It's like a it's like a personal water tower for your house. <clears throat> That's how rich folks used to have running water in their homes. They're real bougie. Some of the old historical mansions and stuff in the world have cisterns you can look at. See that at <laughs> you got a lot, a lot of information about that guy <laughs> without him saying anything, without him saying any of it. That dude was Asian, but he lived here most of his life. He's got two kids and one secret kid. <laughs> you gotta have one to tend the cistern. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> iPhone 7 Audio IC. So you saw the symptoms. It'll either take a very, very long time to boot, or it may not even get past that Apple logo at all. It may just go for, sit on there for like five minutes and then just give up and start over. When the phone is on, you'll have symptoms like, most often, the most common one is the record button in voice memos will be grayed out and won't work. The first thing most users will notice, though, is going to be they can't hear people in phone calls or other people can't hear them. It has to do with, it's the audio codec, so it's in charge of encoding all of the audio coming and going out of the phone. The only audio that will work, because it doesn't go through this codec, is Bluetooth. And it talks, I guess, directly to the CPU. So, if you have an iPhone 7, and you're experiencing audio IC issues, send it in and we'll fix it. If you are not able to send it in right away, 
can hook up a Bluetooth headset, and that'll that'll get you through as long as you don't restart the phone and that doesn't hang up on the on the Apple logo. All right, let's get the air going. The AIR. Get me a fresh can of AIR. Yo. Amir, if you're watching this, you gotta you gotta do the paperwork, man. You gotta do the web form. <laughs> you like that call out? <laughs> Congrats, by the way. You know what for. Back Inc. is live now. Okay. If you're commenting on YouTube, I can see your comments. I'll, I'll peek at Twitch from time to time. Trying to play favorites here. But YouTube is my favorite. Also, Twitch. Nobody's watching on Twitch, so okay. <clears throat> Where were we? Hot air is hot. I'm running on the Weller about 9:25 right now. Let me see how that does. Maybe that's a that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius, for whatever reason. Weller a German manufacturer sends their hot air station with a analog dial in Fahrenheit. Now, I'm all about freedom height anyway. That's my that's my unit of choice. But I've gotten used to the metric system. Um, literally every other piece of soldering equipment I have. So going back and forth from Celsius to Fahrenheit, it starts to make a little more sense. If you think of, you gotta, you gotta find some reference points. So 450 Celsius is somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand Fahrenheit. Right up. Beautiful. And that one came up so good. If you really, really tried to, you could convince me to not even reball it. You have to really try, though. I'd, I'd rather reball this one. Um, While wow, it's still hot, let's, uh, let's put this on 375. My Weller iron is reading out in Celsius. So I'm using 
375 on this angled tip. Heard a lot of praise for preheaters on iPhone 7 boards, so I've ordered mine. It's on a slow boat from China, so when it gets here, it gets here. We'll calibrate and start using that for these repairs. In the meantime, I'm happy with my success rate on this. Okay, so this is the C12 pad. And you can see, might be hard to see on there, but it's wiggling a little bit when I touch it. It's a surface trace going to this resistor. And this is one of the data lines that talks to the rest of the phone on here. You have three other surface traces. So while we're in here, this one's always the problem. I want to say always. It's pretty much always the problem. This one, this is F12. It can also come loose. H12 and J12 can also come loose. So if you're doing this repair professionally and you want to give your customers something something they can hopefully rely on until the baseband CPU craps out on them because it's still an iPhone 7 and the baseband CPU can fail at any time. Don't get me started on that. If you want your customers to have something they can sort of rely on while you have it open and while you have this chip off and while you're making jumpers, you might as well make all four. You're doing them a service by not having to bring it back to you inconvenience in themselves for warranty work and you're doing yourself a service by them not inconveniencing you with warranty work. So your goals are aligned in this in this scenario. More often you and your customers goals and needs are aligned, the better experience they're gonna have. So I'm just cutting four jumpers. Here's the one I'm trimming the tip off of. I like to trim the tips off of these because I, I cut them with a pair of cutting pliers. It does end up leaving this kind of this kind of pointy edge on it though, so I like to cut it off flat. It's going to get cut off again after it's uh, tacked down. All right, switching to the, I want to say, John asked earlier, uh, the tip. I wanted to say this is an RT1SC. RT1SC. And this is for the WMRP soldering iron setup. Very happy with this from Wella. I've used the Hackos before. There's nothing wrong with them. I, I like my Wella. These tips run from $18 to $30, and you'll get, depending on how much you're using it, I get I, I get a good six months out of a tip. So they're not cheap. But they're not prohibitively expensive either. This, this is a good mid-level soldering setup. Alright, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this. I might be all the coffee I drank earlier. Let's just, let's just get it stabbed on that one first. It's not uncommon at all for these pads to, to come up and just be missing when you remove the chip. That happens, don't worry about it. That's, I mean, that's, that's why this thing was sent in in the first place, because that pad's loose on there. It has a terrible connection with the data line it's supposed to be serving. If it does happen, though, make sure you're, you're connected really well. 
We need this end to be connected really well. A little more light on that. It's already starting to close. And you want your jumper to just sit right, right in the middle of the pad that it goes to. Wow. Let's try a different pair of tweezers. I'm gonna blame the tweezers, not my own fat fingers. Up a little bit more natural angle here. Oh, found that. There's one. <clears throat> the last one, I usually start these on the left and then end up at the C12 one. Just got excited. I did C12 first. I usually do the last though, just because I don't want to accidentally bump my other ones with the iron. Alright, I'm going to. I'm going to maneuver this one away from the cap next to it a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, look. There we go. Right, so that pad is loose. As soon as I, I put any kind of lateral pressure on it, it just came right off. Here goes my, my high quality light. Let's turn that back on. There we go. That pad being loose like that, if it goes any further than that, you may want to think about redoing the jumper and just getting rid of the pad altogether. I think this one's going to ride. So, as long as it does, we'll let it avoid any sort of trouble. After the fact, she gone. This one barely has any solder on it. Okay, there are our four jumpers. There they are. We can clean that up a little bit. This will make a nice, uh, make a nice thumbnail. So there's no question anymore. The problem this phone was having was definitely. Audio, I see. I wasn't questioning it anyway. I did put my foot in my mouth a little bit by predicting that it would uh, it would show up in normal mode on 3D tools. That's why I don't gamble. I go to the casino and I'll I will quote unquote gamble enough to get some free drinks. Beyond that, nah. I'm good. Okay. That one looks really gross, doesn't it? Once once the hot air gets it and, and heats it up, I don't want to molest it any further because it's it will get worse. Once the hot air gets to it, everything's gonna cinch back into place. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
watching the touch IC video earlier. This is my quick and dirty method for getting plugs out of places I don't necessarily want it. If you really need to get the plugs out completely, you need to run it through an ultrasonic cleaner. It's the only thing that's actually going to remove it. Hmm. Now that it's now that it's nice and visible, I'm not crazy about that connection. I think it'll run again. I'm gonna look at it real carefully once the once the not the new chip. We're not putting a new chip. Just like the Touch SE, there's nothing wrong with this chip. But once this rebald chip goes back down, we're gonna inspect it very carefully and make sure we have a very good solid visible connection to each of those. All right. Make sure this is on 375. Make sure we have the appropriate tip. Also make sure I don't burn my DC power supply cables. That 6S is still idling at point 0.1, so we I think we got a parasitic draw on there somewhere. That'll be fun. I got about two hours before I gotta go. And we may or may not find it. If we find the problem, this might actually be a good video. If not, it'll be like all the other videos. <laughs> Okay. It's okay because I said it's okay. I'm doing alright. Oh. Just trying to get this nice and clean. I, I really don't like any leftover flux on the chip when I'm reballing. Clean and dry. That unevenness is perfectly fine as long as the as long as the solder paste has something to stick to, it's gonna stick. I'm gonna rebuild this desk. It's really toy in here. Really toy. Like a toy guy. The grid's perfectly square, but the chip itself has a couple long edges, so let's figure out it's going to be this way. If you're trying to line it up, look at it this way. And, uh, just line up one of your corners. Boom. You got it. Good job. I got a little bit of old flux in here. If you don't do something about that, it's going to 
act as a barrier. Um, what do we want to do about that? First, let's turn the hot air down to about 750. We were at about 950 to remove the chip originally. These iPhone 7s, they take a considerable amount of heat. If you're normally if you're normally running about 850 to pull like a Mason Touch IC or a, or a TriStar or something, go ahead and bump it up 15-20%, which is the whole idea behind why people are using bottom heaters and preheaters on these. They're directly opposite on the other side of the board from this audio IC is the the fabled baseband CPU. So if you put too much heat on here, you got a baseband CPU that wants to die. I guess I don't know how else to describe it. These things are just trash, honestly. Pull some flux out here before we hit it with the air. Too much heat on there, you'll You'll bridge pads under that underfilled baseband CPU, and you just took a relatively easy routine repair and you turned it into a. Oops, I killed your phone. Alright, so this one's not wanting to re ball too great. I see one ball floating. I'm waiting for it to grab. I don't think it's gonna. I think I'm gonna have to stuff some more paste in that one little spot. I'm just gonna put all of these to to cool and harden. Yeah, see that one? Why are you like this? Who did this to you? Just get that stupid little thing to, to stick. I think this will be a decent reball. Go. Ooh, I think it did it. Just had to express my disappointment in it. Looking at me um, for how to reball good, go watch Rewire or something. If you're if you're watching this and you're saying I can't reball at all, I don't. I, it just doesn't work for me. Okay, well I could show you some tricks, but if you want to do it good, this is not the video for you. These are this is this is a. A functional working reball. This is not a great, perfect factory quality reball. And that's just because of my my specific skill set. Getting better. After you reball a couple thousand chips, you're bound to get better, right? All right, so I'm hitting this one again. I'm going to go ahead and scrub this off once those dry again. we got nice consistent solder balls, so that's good. It's a little bit of pitting just because they've been... I hit them pretty hard at first trying to get that one to stick. from the edge. I'm just looking to make sure we have a consistent grid. There's no high spots or anything. We really like to close one eye while we do this just to just to make sure the ball is pretty. If you're not making sure your balls are pretty, you're gonna have a bad time. 
dirty balls or good balls. Oh yeah, somebody's gonna clean that, didn't I? Okay, I'll clean it. Yeah, it could use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do do myself a quick favor here. I'm gonna clean this too. This is a a medium bristle toothbrush. Um, I'm about to walk over to Walgreens and get a very soft bristle toothbrush. Um, a small medium bristle paintbrush would probably work really well for this. In fact, I think that's what Rewa uses for a lot of their brushing and scrubbing. to say Rua. I say Rua because it's spelled R-E-W-A. Rua. 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 Sharpie. Okay. Stencils clean for next time. I'm sure in the future, future Aaron will look back at past Aaron and say, hey, man, thanks. Much appreciated. You are right, dude. Okay. While that's out, there's still you're gonna get these little these little nubbins, <laughs> these little, little baby things there. We can just kind of knock those off. That stuff's not big enough to affect a ball size if and when it eventually does migrate. It's not big enough to bridge in between anything. There. Dang, I'm going anywhere. If you're re reballing this for commercial use, so you could like sell this, I would. I wouldn't sell this to any any of you guys. Um, it's still going to work fine. Okay. Oh, that's, that's pretty. That's going to be good. Alright. Make sure you get your chip orientation correct. Like ninety nine percent sure I got it. Get this, get this debris off of here. There we go. There you are. We want the arrow to be up here, and it is okay. Confirmed. Little bit of flux in here. That's plenty. That's gonna spread out underneath there. We don't want it spreading out underneath the rest of the entire board on this side. Alright, let's get this thing mostly centered. We can keep it on the same same setting that we used to, to reball it, which is lower than what we used to remove it because we're using a leaded solder paste that's going to melt at a lower temperature than what was on there before. A lot of benefits to, to using leaded paste here. Not only does it melt at a lower temperature and, and give you more breathing room to not damage the board, once it, when it is hardened it's more malleable, it's a more flexible ball. So as this as this phone flexes and twists and bends in the pocket of the user, or as it's being used, that's how this stuff comes loose in the first place. That's how the pad comes loose in the first place. 
So it's much less rigid, less likely to, to crack, more likely to strike your bend on a microscopic scale. I might have, I might have centered this one a little too perfectly. Keep getting it with the ear. I want it. I like them to be just barely off camera, so when it melts, this one should. This one, this this side is going to go that way. We'll get a, a closer gap on here on the bottom. Of it. There it goes. You saw it. You saw it. Give it a quick nudge before it gets too hot. Okay, we're good. <laughs> did you see it? Did you see it? Did you? Did you? I think we're going to edit out the travesty, which was the first 30 minutes of this video, and just make a, a quick and easy. Audio I see video out of it. Before I get time to edit anything. I'm liking the whole the whole live stream thing. There's there's some production that goes into it, but it's enough it's enough that I can handle. I don't think I could record a video, pull the pertinent stuff out of it, edit it into a usable video. That's not going to happen for a while. Also, this is an Intel baseband. That's an Intel baseband power management chip, so it's going to have an Intel baseband CPU. Much more fragile than the Qualcomm's, so very important to not put too much heat here. I'm going to zoom in one more time on my jumpers. I want to make sure that they still have a good connection. I just want to see the soldered glob on the end of the resistor and hold on to the jumper really well. So there and there. This is this is the only one that wasn't great, but it does look like it has a solid connection, so we're gonna let it ride. Let this cool off. Okay. If you're just on the edge of your seat waiting to use the bathroom, now would be a good time to do that. So I'm gonna go put this back together off camera, and we'll be back to see if anything got fixed. Clean up some of my pieces here. I'm cleaning some paste. Oh yeah. Put my mouse back to something. Okay. Take five. Be back in a few. straight for the kill. <laughs> straight for the kill, man.
the screw stuck to the bottom side of the board. It's one, of the, it's one of the screen screws. Thought I recognized it. Okay, and we're back. Almost a bit. That's probably not, not necessary at the moment. Alright, we're gonna prompt to boot. I got 1.9 amps on my USB multimeter. Here's our flash. That's a normal thing in iOS 11. First time I saw it on a 6, I oh, crap my pants. What? Okay, notice how much faster that was. Alright, I do not have a passcode on this one. Because somebody didn't fill out their paperwork properly. Somebody. Uh, I'm not going to guess a bunch, but so far so good. I'm going to get the I'm going to get this put back together. Uh, I'll get the passcode from the customer. We're going to check all the audio functions, and we're going to press star pound zero six pound. Make sure the IMEI is refreshing. Um, the fact that it says can you see it? No SIM. That's usually a good sign if you have something with baseband problems. Very often, uh, in, if there's no SIM, it'll still say searching or no service. Uh, even though there's no SIM in it, it needs to know if there is or is not a SIM. Alright, so set this one aside until I get my paperwork filled out. Seriously, guys. Uh, you send something in, it's really easy, just fill out the web form. That gives me all the information I need to get this repair done quickly and efficiently and effectively. We're going to go back to our 6S in a minute here. I'm going to go set this aside. So we're still pulling 0 0.103. I'm just going to start unplugging things. All we have plugged in is a, I just turned this number right now, so we'll unplug the power button. This is a 6S, so you do have to be careful to handle it. We have the ECC main energized with the battery. I'm not going to unplug the display. Actually, I might. Okay, proximity is unplugged now. We still have not stopped pulling 0.103. I'm put it in display. Still 0.103. At idle, 0.103 is it's too much. Now we're 133. It probably knows we're on the screen. Probably looking. 
Let's turn it off. I have the time and resources to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a, a TriStar on here. TriStar, TriStar failure will usually cause charging issues the point where the phone probably just will show it's plugged in but won't actually charge or may not know it's plugged in may not connect to the computer. TriStar is, is the chip that's in charge of telling the, the phone that the charger is plugged in. There's another chip on here called Tigris that actually charges the battery but TriStar has to, has to tell it to do so. You want to watch what I'm doing? connectors to the antenna. I'm going to do real low heat just to remove this at first. I'm move to stickers on the 6S instead of a whole shield. You can take that, you can take this whole shield frame off of there. You don't necessarily need to. Loosening the adhesive with some low heat here. <laughs> and I want to reuse this sticker, so I'm going to try not to rip it. Try and get all as much of the adhesive up with it as we can. Phone, so we don't have to stick it back down when it goes in. Okay. Try to start is right here. This is a 1610A3. I am going to cut a little chunk of this frame off just so we can easily access TriStar. So I like to cut about right here. to avoid bending the other side down into the chipset here and also just trying to cut just what I need out of there. Put 
focus on pretty hot. tip here. More surface area. A little more thermal mass. Put this big chunk of metal come up here. Of course more flux and more cancer. they put on the coax cable. Okay. Alright, so we can see TriStar pretty well now. Let's give it a tug. Anyway. TriStar can cause parasitic draw. At this point, unless unless one unless I'm totally wrong and one and three is fine for idle, I've seen phones idle at much lower than that though. I want to say like 0.2 to 0.4 is what you want to see. Unless I'm wrong, this is this is kind of the best guess, best place to start. Traster is relatively easy to change. The monitor hot air is set higher than 400 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Be here all day. Probably still wouldn't. Pull that chip off at 400. I'm going to get a hook. I'm going to get a hook. I'm going to put this. You can't see it. I'm rearranging my, my soldering irons here. I got them in a spot. They're gonna melt eventually. I'm gonna I'm gonna break something. So I'm gonna keep doing future me favors and not break shit. So let's throw a heat sink on the NANDs. Don't, I don't wanna have to pull up a NAND today. Fresh 16 pin A3. TriStar is one of the chips that does break. It does internally short and burn and fail. So if you have a bad TriStar, you can't reball it. The only time you would reball TriStar is if you if you manage to to reflow it, like an iPhone 6 where you're doing a 
a long jumper base pan repair or something. You could you could refloat TriStar in that situation. This stuff. And in that case, you could repair it by reballing and reinstalling it. But if you have a phone that's that's giving you charging issues or data connection issues or any of the other plethora of things TriStar can cause, you just need to replace it, especially if you're doing a an exploratory guess like this. I'm only just starting with TriStar because I'm trying to avoid using my brain today. You only, you only get so much brain. My man John at Adaptive Dominance Fitness, go follow him. He calls it glycogen. I don't know about all that. I just gave you a shout out, man. With your glycogen and everything. Now I can tell my glycogen tank is running a little low. I don't want to use it all up. But maybe we'll get lucky and I can. I can save some brain energy for when I get home. TriStar is a chip that loves to go on wonky if you let it. Huh. That one went down without too much trouble though. Let's get that out of here. Alright, we're going to cool this off. Be cool, baby, be cool. You can tell it's cool when it's no longer hot in your hand. All right, one more thing we're gonna do, just before it goes all the way back to go. Well, I'm not putting it all the way back together anyway right now, but I want to test VCC main in diode mode, and I want to see if there might just be a partial short somewhere. If it's got a, if it's got a slightly low reading, that could explain why we're we're having battery problems. And that's easy enough to do. With the old schematic. Flux here just burnt to a crisp. Let's turn in the black jelly. You. That's proof. There we go. Painting is a compulsion. I must fight it. Just make it look, make it, make it pretty, make it pretty, okay, pretty. All right, um, let's go ahead and reconnect these. Correct cables for the antennas. Uh, 
there's something immensely satisfying about doing these with a microscope. You totally don't need it to do it all with your fingers. So when you get it just right, it just pops into place. It's just that's what we look for right there. All right, uh, let's go to the ZXW. iPhone 6S. And we're already here, right next to PCC main on TriStar, so let's just see which one it is. One of these PCC main. 0B9, LB3, Sonoid, TriStar Bypass, TriStar 10. Oh, you know what? It's probably not actually. It's going to be way down here by Packers. Battery. I feel the middle one's going to be son of a. Hey, I found it. All right, PCC. All right. So these two are PCC. That's what I was saying about the glycogen and the in the brain. It's just not on today. Okay. Three twenty. Three twenty. And that's pretty good. That's I mean that's honestly three twenty is right where it needs to be. Zero. Twenty-eight. Twenty-two is right where they were set. Three twenty-two. I think BCC means fine. Sounds like all the time. Grab that. Okay, back. What were we doing here? PCC main is reading 322 on the old diode mode reading. So it's not the main power rail. Let's plug it in and see if we've had any change, any difference. Just from changing TriStar there. If we did, 
fantastic. Well, yes, look at me, I got it. If we didn't, we can start testing other circuits for low resistance. I think that would be the, the best thing to do, is to get a, grab ourselves a working 6S, known good board, and just start taking readings on all the major circuits that are that are on and see if we get anything lower than normal. I don't think it's a peripheral thing because we unplugged all the peripherals and the board by itself is still pulling 0.103. Before I do any of that, if we're gonna if we're gonna go grab a no good one, I think I'm probably gonna test it at idle as well. And just verify. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe I just did TriStar for no reason. And it's just a bad battery. That's probably what happened, honestly. That was a power cycle. Yep, that's a power cycle. So not only did change in TriStar not fix it, but potentially made things worse. Only potentially. Test dock. I'm going to do this the old fashioned way with a dock and a battery. Sometimes they don't like to start off with these things. USB is pulling 1.1 during a boot. Oh, we definitely got a boot cycle now. Okay. So that could mean I got a bad dry start chip. I think that's where we're going to start. Don't assume the chip that you got from China is a good working chip. Let's do it again. Codex cables out of the way, I don't want to melt them. Sink on the name. I 
one flat pad there that I'm just going to drop a new tristar right on top of this existing existing grid we're not going to pad prep that came off pretty pretty evenly Let's do this one again. Dog battery screen. <laughs> okay. You hear that nervous chuckle of relief? Just because you replace TriStar and it still doesn't work doesn't mean that you messed something up. You can't always trust a chip that was reballed that time. It might have come off somebody else's broken phone. It might have got damaged in transit. You just, just try another one. Half of the time replacing TriStar for me is a test anyway. So, all right. So let's keep in mind, we're still on. Uh, airplane mode still on. All right, let's do this again from the power supply. We're gonna try to power Z one more time. I just, I just want to believe. on triple oh eight and that's next to nothing prompt to boot and right, we can watch this curve we might as well run a graph on it now that's a couple seconds after prompting to boot so it's not going to be perfect boot signature here. Maybe I'm just nervous, but it does seem like it's taking longer than normal. Let's turn these off in the meantime. It definitely seems like it's taking longer than normal. But it 
it's okay. All right, so we're at one percent battery. I'm not showing you the passcode. I'm not doing it. Now we're showing ninety-five percent battery. Let's touch screen not responding. It just let me put in the passcode. There we go. There we go. I'm just waiting for this to come up. So the phone's still still loading. It's just like your computer when you start it up at home. Especially if it's an old slow computer. I wouldn't necessarily call this an old slow phone, but you know when your computer starts up, it looks like everything's there, but you gotta wait a couple seconds. So we're gonna let it fully do that. Alright, now we're gonna lock the screen. And we're going to keep watching our amperage. So it's still one and a half to two and a half. Well, 0.12 to 2.2. It's going to keep watching and not look away. Power Z. But look at that. Look at that. Okay. Do you see what I see? Twice a day, my personal train rolls through. All right, so we were at 0.103 at idle. Now we've just settled down to, uh, on average, 0.25 or so, and it'll jump up every once in a while as it, as it pulls and as it does whatever it's doing inside of there. The gerbils start running periodically. This is a much lower idle signature than what we had before. It was 0.103 constant. It does seem to have settled somewhere in the 0.6 area now. We're going to let this run for a little while. If you're bored, hang out with me. I'm going to condense this into a much more cohesive video. That's what I like to see. Double O2. Let's make sure it's still on. It is still on. <laughs> it didn't it didn't die. There we, there we go. Still on. You can see the, the usage jumps way up. We're gonna call this we're gonna call this a fix. Uh, tomorrow we'll call it a fix. What we're gonna do is put it all back together. We're gonna put her battery that was in here. So, uh, let's keep using that. Uh, we're going to charge it up tonight and then we're going to let it idle overnight and see what our battery looks like in the morning. And then we'll do some stress tests tomorrow on it and another idle test. Um, remember, this battery came in flatline dead, uh, pulling nothing out of the USB. So when I got to it, it was actually pulling charging amperage. But it still it had that that high high draw at idle. Uh, we're we're 0 0.002 at idle right now, which means that that amount of current draw is this battery should last a week, something like that, or or more. Uh, that's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so I guess the proof's in the pudding. Uh, TriStar can cause excessive idle current draw. Uh, somewhere in the, if everything else is working fine, I mean, we were pulling 1.9 amps to charge the battery. That's not typical TriStar symptoms. Uh, but we were pulling 0.1 consistently for how long How long were we working on the iPhone 7? Half an hour? Uh, and it never drops below 0.1. So here we are at 
the one one hundredth of, of that, even less. Half of one one hundredth of that that idles down when it jumps up every once in a while, but so it's definitely still on. Okay. With that, I think we'll conclude the stream. Uh, thank you for watching. Look for this to be maybe a little bit better video once it gets processed and edited. Uh, if you enjoyed this, though, hit that like button for me. Subscribe. Appreciate it.